Oh, <laughs> sorry, sir. I, I didn't know it was you. That's okay. Carry on. See the way I handle that, Marge? Oh. Every day we're losing ground to the Japanese, and I want to know why. Oh, unfair trade practices? <clears throat> Mushy-headed one-worlders in Washington? Uh, some sort of gypsy curse? I'm tired of excuses. Have you come up with a name for our new economy model? You're going to love this, Chief. The Persephone. Persephone? Mm -hmm. What the hell kind of name is Persephone? They want names like Mustang and Cheetah. Vicious animal names. He's so upset about it. Good Lord. Marge, this can't be the right address. Hello in there. Homer? Homer! 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 Welcome to my home, brother. Holy moly, the bastard's rich. Bart, Lisa, and Maggie. Hello, sir. Hello, Mr. Powell. All born in wedlock? Yeah, though the boy was a close call. God, that new baby smell. Homer, you're the richest man I know. I feel the same about you. While you're here, I want you to make yourselves right at home. Now, if you need towels, laundry, wait, maids... Wait, 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 wait. Let me see if I got this straight. It's Christmas Day. 4 a.m. There's a rumble in my stomach. Homer, please. <laughs> Your old man sure loves pork chop. Marco. Polo. Marco. Polo. Will you kids shut up? So, Marge, a little about yourself. Huh, well, I met Homer in high school. We got married and had three beautiful children. I kept the wrong one. Ugly Herb, can I spit over the side? <laughs> I love this kid. Hock your brains out. <laughs> oh, got him! Are you sure you want to give me a car? Hey, you know what these things cost me? There's maybe 40 bucks worth of steel in them. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I'd like a big one, then. We don't have a big one. Why not? Because Americans don't want big cars. Oh. Do you hear that, you morons? This is why we're getting killed in the marketplace. Instead of listening to what people want, you're telling them what they want. Homer, I need your help. And I want to pay you $200,000 a year. And I want to let you. Homer, meet my team of engineers. They're going to build your car. Hiya, team. The man with the vision. The man who's going to bust this company out of its rut. The man who's going to change American transportation forever. So, uh, what kind of car would you like, Mr. Simpson? I don't know. Ahoy, matey! Yeehaw! Kids are so easy to please. Mm -hmm. I really hope we're not spoiling them. Nah. What's that? The onboard computer. All right. Batting ninth, Unky Her. Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. Hope all is well. Hope you had a good Friday, or you're having a good Friday. Hope you had a great week. Hope you're happy and healthy. I hope everything's going the way you want it to go. Please like, share, and subscribe. I always forget to say that. Please, please, please like, share, and subscribe. Well, tonight I'm making this video because buzzwords. Buzzwords. They're all over the internet. They're all over the internet. And all these entrepreneurs, that's all they do is they use these buzzwords and it's insane it's insane they get these people excited and we're gonna focus on one one buzzword in particular generational wealth okay we're gonna say that again generational wealth now why is that such a big buzzword? Why is that such like 
Why is that such an attractive word? It's because people pitch that, entrepreneurs pitch that to other entrepreneurs to do good, to break the curse of, you know, generational debt. And you're going to be the one that changes your family's whole history. You're going to change the way that your family's going. And you're going to become the generational wealth attainer, if you will. And, you know, so many people, that's all you hear. Most people don't got $1,000 in the bank, <laughs> you know. I don't ha I'm I don't have five, I don't have a thousand dollars in the bank. So, you know, I'm in the same boat. But if you don't have a thousand dollars in the bank and you go to seminars, you go to you know, court you take courses, you know and it's one thing if you're really into it and you really want to do it and you really go after it, it's one thing. But a lot of people think they're going to pay for these seminars, pay for these courses, and they're going to attain generational wealth. Generational wealth is not easy to attain at all. I mean, crap, you know, two generations worth of wealth is you know so hard a father opens up a business very successful gives it to his son son messes it up father opens a business maybe it's a clothing store works in it 25 years very successful his son takes over closes in five years um a brother opens a, a food truck somewhere in New York does very well decides he wants to open up another three four put his little brothers and cousins and uh, doesn't work out the way he wanted who's stealing who's not showing up to work on time who's not dedicated you know they, it, it play all these factors play you know like Generational wealth is such a heavy thing to attain. The Rothschilds, Rockefellers, um, Bezos, those are the people, that's generational wealth. Let me give you the definition of wealth. The definition of wealth is However long you can live off the money you have saved. If you can live the rest of your life out with what you have already, you are wealthy. And most people don't even realize that. Most people don't even realize what wealth is. Now, there's a difference for people who have money, and there's a difference for people who have um, money-making businesses that will survive the next decade, two decades, all right? Like oil barons, oligarchs from Russia, um, tech. Tech is huge. Like, you know... And, you know, and it, there's a lot of, like, there's a lot of points There's a, that you got to go through. Like, you know, Vince McMahon, perfect example. He bought the WWF slash E from his father in 1981 or 82, I believe. And the deal was if... He went up to the board. He offered them all a number. He said, if in X amount of time, I don't pay you, whatever money I give you guys is yours, and I'll walk away. Of course, he, he made it. One, two, three. <laughs> you know. He did buy it from his father. His father didn't just give it to him. 
And then Vince went and just, just like a, just like Genghis Khan took over all the territories, all the territories. That actually should be Vince McMahon's uh, nickname. <laughs> he really needs to be called Genghis Khan because he really did take over all the territories, you know. And he built generational wealth for his family. His dad was rich, but he wasn't generationally wealthy. He had money that maybe would have lasted Vin his life, Vince's life, maybe Shane and Stephanie. Vince now has got it to the point where Shane's going to be good for the rest of his life. His son's going to be good for the rest of his life. His Shane's grandkids are going to be good for the rest of their lives. Um, same with Stephanie and Triple H. That's, you know, that's an example of generational wealth. Now, I see a lot of people, you know on Instagram posting those memes, you know, I'm gonna be the one that breaks the curse. Hopefully you are, hopefully you are, but you're not gonna do it working at wherever you're working at. I don't care if you're working at at and I don't care if you're, you know, running a chain of Popeyes, you know, I ran a chain of edible arrangements. It doesn't pay as well as you think, it doesn't. You know, you know, that's why the entrepreneur is so much more respected. Um, I'm going to give you an example. The other day I was watching uh, Vlad TV with LeVar Ball. He said something to the effect of, he had his business and his wife worked a government job. She was a teacher. She had steady income. His business was up and down. He could do really well for three months, raking 20 grand a month. Then come September, October, November, where people aren't really spending their saving. He's lucky if he breaks six. So those are the, those businesses where you have to save what you make when it's in season. Like the people who plow snow, like um, the guys with the pickup trucks that plow driveways and parking lots and all the other stuff like this. Those guys, those guys work one season if they're only doing plow, if they're not doing landscaping. And if they have a bad winter, they, they're they gonna have a bad year. Let me say that again. If they, if the winter isn't, if nothing's falling, these guys are screwed. This is their bread and butter. But, on the flip side of that coin, if it snows at least once a week to twice a week, five to seven inches, these guys got contracts. They're going to make bank, like really good bank. And if the snow's not too heavy, it doesn't matter if it's, you know, a centimeter of snow or 10 feet they have to go and they have to plow their contracts you know like it's amazing sometimes these guys you know they go out and you can literally with your foot go over this like go over the sidewalk and then you can see the concrete and these guys are sitting in this truck laughing because they got 50 contracts at 600 a contract, let's just say. They're gonna make 35,000 every time if the snow falls. 
you know. But let's just say, okay, someone like that, he makes thirty five thousand every time it snows. Let's just say it snows. Let's just say ten times. That's three hundred fifty thousand. You know, that's three hundred fifty thousand. But this guy got that three fifty has to last him the whole year between food, between car payments, between putting his kids through school, clothes, a lot of things. And that three fifty is before taxes. Alright. Now people don't look at it that way. They look at these guys like, oh, they're making money hand over fist. And, you know, that's a big misconception. Those guys, they make a big amount of money, but that big amount of money has to last them for a year until the next season comes. Another misconception is people that own gas stations make a lot of money. They really don't. Really, 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 they don't. Let's just say they're, let's just say they're paying two dollars and ten cents a gallon. They sell it for two dollars and fifteen cents a gallon because they have competition on the other three corners. You're making five cents a gallon. You sell, let's just say you sell 200,000 gallons, right? Now, you got to pay for the guy that pumps. You got to pay to clean the actual, the actual, um, the tank where the gas is held. You got to clean it. You got to pay taxes on your property. You got to pay, you know, you got to live. You got to eat. You got to, you know, if you if you could, you got to enjoy yourself, you know. Anybody that works hard deserves to enjoy themselves. Anybody. You know. And the clip in the beginning with the Simpsons, <laughs> that was... Like, I found it so funny that Homer, a normal guy, finds out he has a, a rich brother. His brother is wealthy beyond, beyond his, like, beyond whatever. And his brother is jealous of Homer because Homer got what his brother doesn't, a family. So sometimes you got to make that choice. Do I want to work, 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 and, you know, break the generational curse on my family? Or do I want to have a family? You know, to each his own, you know? Me, I, I'll take, I'll take the latter. I, I want to have a family. I, that's just me, you know? And, you know, a lot of people online don't even realize what generate what like generational wealth is some people think a million dollars is generational wealth a million dollars ain't shit i'm just gonna curse a million dollars ain't shit especially if you live up here in the east a million bucks ain't nothing let's just say you get a million right I'm going to make it even sweeter. Let's say you get a million after taxes. What's the first thing you're going to do? Most people, you know, people who don't have a business mind or don't think they just see this million right away, they go get the house. They go get the car. Bam, right there. Depending on what house you bought, let's just say you, the medium, 400000 you get the car you always wanted, let's just say eighty to a hundred thousand, right? And let's say eighty and then twenty for your for your for your son or your daughter, right? So right there that's half of it. Got more than half of it gone, right? 
And if you think you could live off that, off the rest of that, that like 550, 600, or not even, you are wrong. Let me show you how fast that's gonna go, right? Okay, so you paid off your house cash. You bought it in a nice area. Taxes are 15,000 a year, right? Not mortgage, taxes. 15,000 a year. Okay. So in 10 years, that's a buck 50. <laughs> so where what are we left with? 300? Okay. So maintenance, uh, let's just say all your bills, you know, the kids, everything. Let's just ballpark it around, depending on how you're living, seeing how you got a million dollars, maybe you want to splurge a little bit. So everything comes out to around 20. Not 20. Yeah, like... 5200 a month let's just say you know that's that's on the low end too 5200 a month 10 months that's 52000 that that's 64000 so 64000 so you bought the house for late like we said for 5 you bought the car for a hundred. Remember, this is after taxes. You got a million, cut it in half, you got five left. So, I mean, no, no, no. Uh, I'm sorry, I take that back. Uh, you already paid on, you already paid the taxes on a million, so you have a million. So you pay five, bam, you got five left. You pay a hundred for cars, you got four left. You spend, uh, what did we say, 55, uh, 65,000. So now you're at, you're at around 275, if my math's correct. Now you want to live off that because you have that you don't have the fortitude to work so you call out more or you just quit and you start going splurging and you shop and you buy jewelry and you buy clothes and you you hook up the house the way you want it you buy you buy maybe another sports car god forbid you have a gambling habit <laughs> forget all of what i just said that whole thing's going to gambling. You know. And that's why I say, man, that word generational wealth is more a buzzword than ever. You know, it's not easy. It's not easy. You know. In the words of Joe Rogan, you know, two people ago, your family was either wealthy or poor. Two people later, you're gonna be the one to break it, God willing. But then two, uh, one person later, he ruins it. It's a cycle, you know? And um, Pat, you know, he runs the Valley, he owns Valley Entertainment. He made his money with insurance but I don't know if it was insurance. Uh, I'm just going to say P2P. Not PHP. Not people helping people. P2P. That's all I'm going to say. You can look that up more. Coffee Zella does a great job. Him and Spencer Cornelia. You know, and um, another thing, look at uh, Krishan Rock. Krishan Rock didn't want Blueface to keep taking her money, taking her money, taking her money. 
Blueface thought he was entitled to it. She was like, no fucking way. You're not entitled to any of this. This is my money. I work for this. And it's true. Zeus liked her. They didn't give her a show because she was Blueface's girlfriend. They gave her a show because people like Kashawn Rock. You know? And she's doing so well for herself. You know? Hats off to her. Hats off to Cardi B. Hats off to everybody that's coming up. But the, the problem is... A lot of these people live in facades. I'm not saying any of the people I just named, but rappers, they live in facades. Like, you don't know what's going on in a rapper's life. Soldier Boy is dead broke. People thought he had money. He's dead broke, especially now after this lawsuit. You know? Uh, that, like, that's insane. That's insane, you know? This guy getting hit with 13 million. 13 million dollar like he got to he got to pay 13 million. You guys know what I'm talking about. I don't want to say his name cuz I don't want to get demonetized. But, you know, so, you know. What are you going to do when you have a judgment against you for 13 million? You probably have never seen 13 million. You know, he's probably seen maybe a quarter of that, but 13, I I highly doubt it. You know? Well, that was enough for tonight. Thank you guys for being with me. Like, share, subscribe. Please and thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys tomorrow.